their answer to everything is the government because they themselves don't believe in personal responsibility. And this is a perfect case study in that. AOC does not see any personal responsibility on her part to take care of her own family because in her mind, that's the government's job, not mine. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. In today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we are once again returning to, and I know it seems like I'm going after a low-hanging fruit, but look, she keeps throwing me softballs. It's not my fault. You put it in front of me, I'm going to smack it around. You, you give me a, a slow, <laughs> you give me a slider over the plate, um, right down the middle, I'm going to take a swing at it. I'm sorry, it's just my nature. AOC is back in the Daily Dose of Stupid. And this time she is, because she's always the victim, that's the thing that you can always remember about AOC is that no matter what happens, no matter what uh, circumstance surrounds her in life, no matter how wealthy she is or how many breaks that she gets or no matter how many things she gets that she did not earn or deserve, she is always the victim in every circumstance regardless of what happens to her. And this story is a perfect example of that. So to give you a little bit of background, AOC tweeted this out a few nights ago. And this is to her talking about her grandma. She says, in AOC voice, Like, just over a week ago, my abuela, that's Spanish for grandmother, for those of you that are not bilingual, my abuela fell ill. I went to Puerto Rico to see her my first time there in a year because of COVID. This is her home. Hurricane Maria relief hasn't arrived. Trump blocked relief dollar signs for PR. People are being forced to flee ancestral homes, and developers are taking them. And, of course, for those of you that are listening, I know you can't see the pictures, uh, but those of you that are audio only, it shows a picture of, like, her grandma's roof falling in and some of the repairs from Hurricane Maria, which, by the way, was, like, four years ago now. It still has some of the damage from that event, which is sad and tragic, and, and I hate that that has taken place. Now, the funny thing about that is, the equipment actually did get there. The relief actually did arrive. The problem was in distribution, which was largely not handled by the federal government, but by the local government of Puerto Rico, which is heavily Democrat. And so Trump did his part. Like the federal funds and the relief actually showed up on Puerto Rico's door. To this day, some of those things have not been dispersed to the people that they should have been because of mismanagement. The Fed can only do so much, regardless of who is president. I'd say this if, if this happened under Joe Biden. If he got the stuff to the door and got it inside the state, or in this case, the colony, then that's on the government there locally that didn't distribute it properly. You know, they, they can't go in and force it on them. It showed up at their doorstep. It's like um, getting mad at Amazon when they delivered the package on the door and being like, if again, an AOC voice, Ah, they, it wasn't even inside my house. Well, th that's your part right there. If you didn't bring it into your house, open up the box and use the thing that was inside, that's your fault. You can't blame Amazon for that. Trump got the stuff into the state. It's up to them to actually distribute it. And again, there are reports that to this day, there are supplies that have not gotten there. And by the way, AOC is pointing that out aptly. Here's the funny thing about that, though. AOC is not poor. She may have been at one time in her life. By the way, I don't believe that. She tried to paint herself as some like poor scrappy kid from the Bronx when we turn out she actually lived pretty much her entire childhood in a very wealthy, mostly white neighborhood outside of the Bronx. But anyway, AOC recently just uh, leased a Tesla, which by the way is about $60,000. And she also lives in a very swanky apartment and has multiple homes because, of course, she is a congressperson. So she works in New York and or sorry, she works in D.C., but lives in New York. And so she's got multiple homes. Uh, she's always wearing like super expensive clothing. Uh, this is something that we pointed out on one of her socialism thing. And she does fundraising on a fairly regular basis. You may recall that she had that ridiculous tax the rich sweatshirt 
that cost 60 bucks a sweatshirt. So AOC obviously has the power and influence to do fundraising measures, and she also has a good bit of money on her own. So why is it that her own grandmother can't afford to get her house fixed? Why is it that her grandmother is living in these conditions when AOC would be able to help? And this is exactly what Matt Walsh, who is a, a columnist and a blogger over at the Daily Wire, don't agree with him on everything, but he is a conservative and, and he's you know pretty good, especially at social issues when he's talking about um, some of the hypocrisy of the left. He pointed this out on Twitter. And they got into a spat, went back and forth a little bit. And then Matt Walsh said basically what any normal conservative Christian would do is, fine, if the government isn't helping this person out, and it seems like her family obviously isn't helping her out in the sense that AOC went over there to visit her and didn't seem to want to live, lift a finger to actually repair her own grandma's house, he said, fine, if, if the government won't help her and her family won't help her, I'm going to help her. And so what Matt Walsh did is he started a GoFundMe account where he raised, in the span of two days, $100,000 to fix Abuela's home. And they rejected it. And GoFundMe actually reached out to him, and I saw this in an interview he did the other day. They reached out to him and said that the family of the beneficiary, not the family member herself, not Abuela herself, but the family of the GoFundMe page said that they would reject it, which I assume means either AOC or somebody, you know, like her mom or dad or something like that. I didn't even know that the person that isn't the beneficiary could reject a GoFundMe like that. But either way, that's what GoFundMe decided to do. And this resulted in a fantastic spat between the two of them. Um, let's observe real quickly what this means, though. Because the way I see it, there are really only two possibilities here. Either Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is lying. These are old pictures, and her house has long since been repaired, and thus they don't need the money. And so they rejected the money on the, the basis that they don't really need it, and she's just lying about her grandma and lying about her living conditions and just using the lies of political football. Or she's, and this is worse, She's allowing her grandmother to do this despite the fact that she's living in luxury in both D.C. and New York, wearing designer clothes all the time, driving around a very expensive electric vehicle, eating out at fancy restaurants in D.C., which let me remind you, the D.C. area has the 10 communities, the 10 counties in America with the highest cost of living in the world, and AOC lives there for a large part of her time. And yet her grandmother, living out in Puerto Rico, she can't even raise money from other people and be bothered to sell some really overpriced t-shirts to help her own grandma? One of those two things is true. Either she's just lying about it, or she prefers letting her grandma live that way so she can use her as a political bludgeon to bash people over the head with as her political adversaries, in this case, Donald Trump. Neither of those things is good. Neither of those options speaks very well to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And the thing is, it does show a difference in mentality here because me as a conservative and somebody that considers my first duty to my family first and foremost, I would be ashamed to show people the living condition of a family member of mine if I had the means to help them out and didn't because I would see that. I would have thought of that before I posted it, that if nothing else, out of selfish reasons, this will make me look really bad if I'm pulling down six figures a year and my immediate, not my immediate family, but my, my nearest to kin just about it is living in squalor in Puerto Rico. Like I would have been embarrassed to even post that, but apparently AOC sees no problem with this because she sees the government as being what's responsible for taking care of her family, not her. And that is a deeper seated problem here. But what I love about this and, and Matt Walsh trying to help her out is it resulted in one of the greatest headlines of all time coming directly from the independent. I love this. And I think that you will too. From the independent, you can see their right wing blogger launches GoFundMe for AOC's Puerto Rico grandmother in latest personal attack. 
<laughs> We've all been attacked from time to time, no matter who, you, no matter who you are or where you come from. There's at least one person in your life that doesn't like you that has attacked you or threatened you or you know maybe even physically attacked you. I hope that hasn't happened to you. But all of us have been attacked by somebody. Someone's lashed out at us at some point. I've been attacked a lot because of my career. I don't think I've ever been attacked by somebody offering to give me $100,000. In fact, if anyone wants to attack me by presenting me with $100,000, please, by all means, do that. I'd love for you to attack me with $100,000. You can attack me with $100,000 in $1 bills if you want to. We can sit here for two hours and you just fling $1 bills at me to attack me with your money. If you want to do this, please do so. I have, you know, a gun collection to support. <laughs> oh, man. It just amazes me how the, the liberal media is so hilarious and so predictable. How somehow everything Republicans do in response to something a Democrat does is an attack or it's them pouncing or whatever. I mean, you can almost set your watch by it that that is what is going to happen. They they cannot even fathom the idea that a Republican might actually genuinely want to help somebody. And in this case, this wasn't play money. This wasn't like a thing. He's like, I'll give you $100,000. No, he's like, he literally just offered to hand her family $100,000 and they rejected it. And somehow this is an attack? How did the how did that headline make it past the editor? But I think the the answer is obvious. They're leftist and they see this somehow as an attack by giving them a hundred thousand dollars. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, by the way, Yahoo News issued this statement, which talks about AOC's reaction to this whole thing, which makes it even funnier. Let's take a look at this from Yahoo News. My abuela is doing okay. But instead of only caring for mine and letting others suffer, I'm calling attention to the systematic injustices you seem totally fine with in ha having in a U.S. colony, she continued. <laughs> Again, this is a problem with the leftist ideology as a whole. They don't see family as the first line of defense. See, to a conservative, it goes like this in the hierarchy of responsibilities. Your first responsibility is to your family. The second, if you go to a church, to your church, then to your community, then to your state, then to the federal government. That's how this works. But your highest priority is to yourself and your family. That's the way God organized the world and structured the world. That's supposed to be supreme. And that's the first people that you're supposed to take care of. This is reiterated over and over again in the scripture that you know, it's kind of like your grandma used to say, you better start sweeping your own porch before you start trying to sweep somebody else's. Well, that's the same principle here. You take care of your family first, and then you worry about the government or the, you know, the systematic thing that AOC is talking about here. And I also love how she's like, um, to Matt Walsh, she's like, uh, the, the systematic oppression that apparently you're totally fine with. How is Matt Walsh fine with it? He actually did something to try to help re remedy it. And AOC, she's sitting on her butt doing nothing. And Matt Walsh is actually trying to help the people there. And she's like, you seem fine with it. It's like, well, you seem fine with it. You're the one not doing anything about it. Matt Walsh is actually trying to change it. But anyway, I do think that that just illustrates this difference that when a conservative see somebody in need, their first instinct is to try to help them themselves. When a liberal sees somebody in need, their first instinct is to tr try to find a very rich person to help them. And usually by means of force, not by asking them to help. And that really is the difference. The AOC thinks that this should be the government's responsibility and the government should be the one taking care of her grandma so she doesn't really have to lift a finger. And again, this is just assuming that she's telling the truth here. I don't know that she is. I mean, she lied about being in the building for the January 6th riot. She lied about a protester trying to threaten her when it turns out it was actually a police officer. I mean, the woman lies at the drop of a hat, so she very well could be lying here and her grandma's house has already been fixed. But let's just assume that she's not. If she is telling the truth, then what is actually going on here is she is saying, according to her own, her own statement and her own logic, 
that she's not going to worry about fixing her own grandmother's house until the system comes and does it for her. She would rather her grandmother suffer than help her out herself because she's waiting on the government to do it. That's how a Marxist thinks, that it's supposed to be done by the government and the government is the solution to every problem. You know, even if I believed the government were flawed and even if I believed it were wrong and corrupt, that still would not absolve me of my responsibility to help out my family members when I am able. And it amazes me that AOC didn't even think that that was a possibility and it didn't even register with her that maybe I shouldn't post pictures of my grandma living in these conditions from an event that happened four years ago because it would kind of show people that I don't really care about my grandma. Like that didn't even cross her mind. And that is what is so astounding about this. But I think what it does highlight is ultimately it shows that socialism is not about compassion. It is about political power. Because AOC doesn't even have compassion for her own grandmother when it comes to trying to help her out of this situation. Ultimately, it's just a way for you to avoid responsibility. That's what all socialism is. You don't have to worry about the consequences of having a baby out of wedlock because the state will pay for that baby or pay for you to get an abortion if that's the case. Well, you don't have to worry about you know overeating, living a completely unhealthy lifestyle because the government is going to take care of your health care needs. You don't have to worry about being irresponsible with your money because the government is going to provide for you. You don't have to worry about being lazy and not working because the government is going to step in and help. You don't have to worry about making really bad grades and a terrible S ACT score because the government is going to step in and make sure that you have a college education. Their answer to everything is the government because they themselves don't believe in personal responsibility. And this is a perfect case study in that. AOC does not see any personal responsibility on her part to take care of her own family because in her mind, that's the government's job, not mine. Socialism is not about charity and not about compassion, and it never was, and this story proves it. This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.